Hey everybody, my name is Patrick and I own McDonald Timing and today I'm going to show you how to build your own scoreboard that is powered by a Raspberry Pi and gets its time from finish links. It is deliberately bad. So, uh, I created this clock. It works, technically. Um, it, it's got no real quirks, uh, but it's not pretty by any means. So, why did I create this? Uh, it's kind of important to know. I have a couple of crews that are going to be working for me this cross-country season 2021, and I do not have enough clocks running through or by finish links. Um, you can buy clocks very easily online uh, on Amazon or eBay that are cheap and terrible and they get their time because you hit a, a button and they've got software on it that actually runs and everything, but I didn't want that. I wanted to make sure that I was getting the running time through Finish Links um, because it's just a lot easier, honestly. So I created this ugly contraption that does the job. Um, I had a couple of panels lying around and I had the cabling lying around and I got a Raspberry Pi and an Adafruit an RGB matrix hat and created this. So for under $250 is what I've got into this device right now and it works and it's fine. Um, a lot of people ask me why I was going to give this away though and so the reason why, a couple, a couple reasons. I don't know Python, I know JavaScript, and so JavaScript is actually what's running to take the data from Finish Links and then get, get it over to the Pi. Uh, because of that, I'm not running it all on the Raspberry Pi, so some of it is running on the Lynx computer. I've got a very, very lightweight uh, application that is in the Electron shell that's getting that information and sending it over to the Pi, which is great. Um, works just fine, honestly, uh, and it, it does its job very, very reliably. I'm, I'm very happy with it, knock on wood. Um, and then additionally, it's just ugly. Um, you know, I, I don't have metal fabrication skills and that's really what I would need in order to create this as a kind of device that could be sold to the public. Uh, it, so it's really just supposed to be a lightweight couple of panels and, and very simple. Uh, that way my, my guys can take it because they're going out in, in timing from, from a car, not from a nice big cargo van or whatever. So for them, I think it makes total sense. They're gonna be really happy. Uh, to just be able to throw this in the back. It gets an Ethernet cable and it gets a power cable and that's it. And so, yeah, I'm happy to give it away. If I was running everything on the Pi and I knew some metal manufacturers might be a little bit different, but for right now, like, if you want to build this, have at it. This, I do not recommend this to be your one and only clock that you have out there. Like, there are better ones available. Uh, you know, go get the micro gate, micro tab, go get the finished results display that will display the actual event name and everything. Those are better devices by a long, long way. But if you're like me and you've got a couple of days that need, uh, that need this at the finish line, it, this is just, it's going to be just fine. It's going to work. It's going to work just, just okay. <laughs> so, uh, let me show you how it kind of all comes together. There's going to be a software portion and a hardware portion and then I'll kind of show you all the little extra quirks as far as the hardware goes and and show you kind of how it all fits together and I hope if you enjoy this video you consider subscribing to the channel I've got some actual good stuff and then I've got some some stuff like this like uh, but this this was a, a really fun project it took me about a week and a half or so um, I'm really happy with it I know it's terrible it should be terrible like that was the whole point of it it's okay if it's terrible Minimum viable product is, is what this is. So, uh, hope you enjoy. If you have questions, please feel free to leave it down below. And again, I, I've given you all the software you need, the GitHub repos that have the Electron app as it stands, that all you need to do is download it. The other app repo is gonna have the uh, the app if you wanna make some changes, you wanna change the color or the font or, or the location of the time and everything, you have at it, go to, go to town on it and take it away. Um, and then the Raspberry Pi section, those are just going to be instructions that I'm showing you over the course of the video. Some of them are linked down below. Um, all this information is freely available on the, on the web in various locations. Uh, I used a couple of things uh, from the How Chu website, and uh, they, they were really good. All this stuff is out there. I, I do have some decent programming skills with JavaScript at this point in time, but I'm nowhere near it, like an expert on it. And honestly, I'm confident that you can do this on your own if you just spend a little bit of time with it. So, 
let's get into the software side. Okay, so now for the code that's going to be on your Lynx computer, not the Raspberry Pi. You go to the GitHub repo, and right now I've only got that stuff on there. I will have the Raspberry Pi stuff soon. But for right now, we have two repos that we're going to be using for the Lynx side of it. The Ready one is going to have a installer for the Electron app that, that runs the server and then outputs to the canvas. And we'll talk about that when we go to the other repo. And then also it has the scoreboard file, which you need to put into your Lynx folder. Uh, and then it has some information about what kind of settings we're going to use for the Lynx scoreboard itself within the Lynx scoreboard settings. Um, but everything is basically ready to rumble for you. So. Um, we'll go back to the running clock in case you want to make some changes to it. Now, all the information is on here, so if you want to but you don't have any coding background, uh, you can use this video and also you can use the information on the README to go ahead and make the changes that you would like to make. But let's take a look at it. When you download or clone that repo, you're going to have a folder that looks mostly like this, except for the output folder, which we'll talk about later. Um, so basically, all these things you have in here, you can do stuff with. I would not touch any of them. The only thing that you can or should touch is the render file, which we have right here. And so we've got about five things in here that uh, off the top of my head that we can go ahead and make some changes to. One is the width of the panel and the height of the panel, and that's the overall size of the overall panel. So I'm running two 16 by 32 panels to create one large panel, which means that the height is 16 and the width is 64. I'm also running this on the Finish Links computer. It's very, very lightweight, so it should not be a problem. So I'm going to output to a host, which is the local computer, 127001, and then a port 5479. So these things can be modified if you have some sort of issue with it or you want to output to a secondary device. And then a lot of the stuff you don't really want to touch, should not touch sort of thing. Um, if you're familiar with JavaScript, you probably see what's going on here. It's relatively simple. We're just creating a device and then we're holding that in memory so that we kind of know what's happening. And then we come down here to time post. Uh, so what's happening is that there's an element on the, an HTML page, the index.html page, uh, and then it's got, it, it becomes essentially a canvas and we're setting the height and the width of it. And then we are changing it to the data that we're getting from this function or the, from, from up here on the server message. So um, things that you might want to change are the setback and the text size. Uh, so it, it, there's an if statement that's depending on the size, the amount of the data is going to set the text size and the setback to a certain XYZ sort of thing. So uh, basically, if the time is really long, like it's over an hour, we are changing the text to make it smaller. And if it's uh, relatively small, then we're going to have it be here and then have it be this size, XYZ sort of thing. So we're moving it around depending on the size. And for me, it's really not that big of a deal. Uh, you'll see when you when you run it that it does change slightly in location. Uh, but because I'm, I'm really gearing this towards cross-country season right now, uh, this code is set up to handle this in, in a very specific way. Uh, when it gets to 15, 16, 17 minutes or more, uh, you'll see it's, it's pretty lightweight and it's really just trying to get across to the runners really, really quickly what time it is on the clock. Uh, and then down below, there's a couple more things. One, you can set the fill style. Uh, I set mine to yellow. You can set yours to white, red, green, whatever you want to. Uh, you can actually, I believe, use an RGB color, but I'm just keeping it simple and I want to be able to, to see it really well. And the yellow works really, really well on my panels with very, very low brightness level. Um, and that's uh, in order to make sure that I've only got one plug coming in and out of the back of the device uh, for power. So, and then we're sending it as, as an image to the canvas and it's being drawn. So hope that makes sense. Uh, now we'll take a look at the Raspberry Pi side of things. So you've got your brand new Raspberry Pi ready to rumble. So we're gonna install a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, we're going, going to start out by installing the Adafruit library for the actual matrix app for, for the board that you put on top of it. So we're going to put in this long curl and then we're going to then pseudo bash it together. 
Uh, the good news is that this is all available on Adafruit's website, so I recommend you go, go there and check things out. When you install it, you're going to be asked a simple question about whether or not you want to borrow from the sound component in order to make the board look better. And the answer is yes. Uh, you'll need to then do a solder jumper wire from, uh, I think it's 16 to 18 on the actual uh, matrix hat on the, on the hat itself but that will allow some power to be brought over from the sound side of things to make the uh, the board flicker less and i think it is worth it so we've got that all set up and then we need to change the raspberry pi to a static ip address hopefully you know a little bit about ip addresses at this point in time i chose 192.168 dot zero dot 171 because my Lynx computer is running at dot five uh, and I don't have anything else running in the 171 range but you know you do you you might have it running on something totally different and that's okay too uh, so we just type in that pseudo nano line and then add those four lines to the bottom and then you're good to go we also need a power switch uh, so I recommend one of the cheap net, uh, normally open switches you can find them on Amazon really cheaply a few bucks a piece and all you got to do is literally go in, type the a git clone for this how to power button, and then you go ahead and uh, install it and hit enter, and you're literally good to go. It's done. Uh, you then need to solder the power switch to the SCL and then to a ground on the, mat the matrix hat. It, again, very, very simple. I was able to do this within a few minutes, and we're good to go. Next, we need to install RPI RGB LED Matrix, which is a library from Henner Zeller. And uh, we're also going to install Pixel Push from Henner Zeller. And that's actually, all this stuff is what's actually running the boards and what you see on the boards themselves. So that will allow you to run this demo. And the demo is what I recommend to try to dial in your settings for your boards. So you can see some of my settings that I needed to use, uh, you know, LED multiplexing three, and then how many I've got chained together, the brightness I want, the number of rows, yada, yada. All that stuff was important for me in order to make things look correct. So I ran the demo, which is at the very, very bottom line, that pseudo line with the demo, and then dash D zero, which is just a rotating square on the screen. When the square looked like a square and was all proper and set, that's when I knew that all of my settings were, were available. Um, if you go to the the uh, if you go to the description and go to the actual GitHub profile for this library, you can see some of the options you have to dial in. You're going to need to spend some time here to get things everything get things all sorted out. And then with the pixel push, uh, we're going to install pixel push, and similarly, we're going to pseudo make it. And then we are, that's actually what's running, uh, you know, from the electron side of things. So that is where we're going to be sending our time signature. Uh, and then that's going to be pushed and drawn to the screen. So all that information is on there with, you know, that LED multiplexing, everything that I needed to run the demo correctly, you have to put at the pixel push line as well. So that line is, is a super important line and we'll come back to it later when we actually uh, set it up to run this script from the startup of the machine. But here we're going to sudo nano home pi dot bash rc. And this is actually what's happening at the very beginning when you boot up the Pi. So the very, very bottom, we're going to write this line echo running at boot and then sudo slash home Pi node RPI pixel push. Basically, we're going to provide the path to pixel push and then we're going to provide the settings that we actually want to run the boards at. All very, very important. And they're all from the exact same as they were earlier. The dash U and 65507 is the maximum size of the UDP datagram. It's not necessarily important, but kind of why not? And then the dash D is important. That allows you to run pixel push as daemon. So it will run in the background and you'll be good to go. So now is really the choice uh, DIY situation. You do you. Uh, I know acrylic bending and have a kind of a DIY acrylic bending station. So I went with acrylic. Maybe you're really good at metal working and you have a metal break or you want to do something even more basic than that and just attach it to some wood. Obviously, you just want to make sure that it's, it's relatively stable and level. And so I went with acrylic. Um, if you go with acrylic, uh, you can create your own bending station. I have a video about acrylic bending and uh, camera cover uh, creation that is down in the description, and that will teach you how to create the little bending station that I have here. 
Uh, and basically the only modification I made was a longer wire and then a taller wire setup. So I have these longer screws. Um, the one thing I'd say is you do want to start with the middle channel first. I went with the outside edges and that was a mistake. Um, I did put a piece of wood on there, which was really helpful when it came to uh, making sure that the uh, acrylic was nice and stable when bending it and didn't warp, and I would recommend that. But otherwise, it's really just a matter of making sure that you get the bends in and, and do it the way that, that you want to do it. Uh, now, my P8 boards that I created this one for, they are about five inches tall, and I ended up going with an eight inch uh, tall piece of acrylic. I have a, an inch overlap on top, so if you were going to make it somehow nice and flush, you'd want to incorporate about an extra inch in for the bend. Um, on you know on both sides so um, at least make it seven inches I, I would say even more than that is kind of not a worry if you make that channel extra wide it's really not that big of a deal um, but this this phase of it is really going to be about what you're comfortable with and what you know if you want to do it with wood or metal or whatever you you need to you just need to make it so that it, it's it's set and it's not going to move around a whole lot and then you'll be good to go Okay, so let's talk about kind of the overallness of this and kind of wrap things up a little bit. Um, as I've showed you, it's it's pretty much just a make it and go as you as you please. Uh, you know. So let's talk about kind of the overallness of this. Uh, as I said, like it is to a very specific purpose. I need to display the time. I want to do it through finish lengths, and then I'm good to go. I've been really happy with it. Um, I, I, the performance is, is fantastic. I'm going to upgrade the panels to P5s, uh, which are going to give me double the pixels actually, and I think it'll look a little bit better. Um, and I'll post something on our Twitter page when it comes to you know the differences between them. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm really honestly happy with them. I know it's terrible. It's not meant to be good. It isn't good. It's, it is terrible. It's great. It's fantastic. It's exactly what I'm going for. Um, if you do this, definitely do the power button. Uh, it makes a huge difference. It's frankly really easy to do. And also do uh, have the kind of the extension of the, the barrel plug. The barrel plug adapter guy was, uh, is key. Um, I'm really happy about it. And um, I do recommend using a static IP address and using the ethernet for it, uh, not, not going through Wi-Fi. I think it'll just probably bog down. But all these libraries are super lightweight. Um, definitely need to thank uh, Henry Zeller for creating this fantastic library series which allow you to deal with these RGB boards. Um, some of the ideas I got from a friend of mine, Chris Sabato, which is he's active on, on Timer's Talk and he's a, an amazing SID and programmer uh, up at Willamette University. And, um, and you know, it, if you enjoy doing something like this, this is going to be a lot of fun. This is a really neat project to do over the course of like a long weekend. Um, and just to prove that it's doable, I'm, I'm pretty stoked about that. So, um, you know, if you enjoyed it, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave something down below. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you're not a subscriber and you watched this whole damn thing, like you need to subscribe, please subscribe. Um, thank you for watching and I uh, hope you enjoyed it. They're selling are actually going to be online and of course the time has died. And therein lies the perils of uh, designing your own scoreboard. Uh, it was just the, the cable came loose, the, the Ethernet cable. Um, so, 